Hi, I'm Michelle. I'm a PhD student at Cornell and I study physics. And for the past five years, I've been running a physics of bubbles workshop. But since we can't meet in person this year, we're going virtual, so this should be fun. Okay, I'm gonna start with the bubble basics. To make a bubble, you need a few components. You need the bubble solution. You need a site on which the bubble to form. In the biz, we call this a nucleation site. And lastly, you need a force to push that solution through the site. Okay, I think we have our bubble basics down. Next, we're gonna study bubbles in their natural environment. What I have here is seltzer water. And before I do anything, I'm gonna just look in my glass and see where the bubbles are forming. And I don't know if you could see, but the bubbles are all forming on the sides and the bottom of the glass. And the reason that is, is the surface is rough and that roughness provides nucleation sites for bubbles to form. To decrease the force required to make bubbles, one way to do that is to decrease the surface tension of our liquid. Now soap and bubble solution, which is just soap water, is something that reduces surface tension. And if I pour bubble solution into my seltzer water, it creates these, this cascade of bubbles because the surface tension is reduced, making it easy to form bubbles. And I made a delicious beverage. So surface tension is a really fundamental and interesting concept that's kind of hard to wrap your head around. But you could really just kind of think about it like regular tension. So this is a rubber band. Um, when I pull the rubber band down, it wants to go back up. They're, they're, I create tension and it creates this effective force. I have this little uh, wand and string that I made myself. Wind. And if I pop the bottom part, it creates this effective force to that the um, string wants to go up. And <clears throat> For my last dem demonstration of surface tension, I'm going to take some milk. Um, this is actually almond milk because I'm more of an alternative milk type of gal. But any white beverage will do. I'm going to drop some food coloring in it. There's red. Here's green, and yellow. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to take a Q-tip. I am, and I'm going to take my soap, and I'm gonna soap up that Q-tip. And I'm gonna dip this Q-tip into the food coloring, creating these fun, starburst patterns. Before we go back outside for our final demonstration, I have a quick demo to show you inside. This is the disappearing bubble. It's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like someone took a slice off the top of the bubble right there. The reason we see bubbles is through a process called thin film interference. And what's happening here is the bubble is getting so thin at the top that the light is no longer reflecting off of it. It's too thin, it's just transmitting right through, giving the illusion that it's disappearing. So we're used to bubbles being spheres, but they don't have to be. Bubbles get their shape from a process called minimal surfaces. And while a free bubble will always take on a sphere, you could get different shaped bubbles by providing fun shaped wands. And 
mathematics will always determine the how to minimize its surface area to and what shape the resulting bubble will take. Now this one's really cool. It creates these bubble edges in like a bubble vertex, which we're not used to seeing. But my favorite wand is this cube one. It's a bit of a process to set up, but And I get made this suspended cube of a bubble in this frame. So yes, you can make a cube bubble without breaking any laws of physics.